What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're starting off in the shop here. I am actually in the process of building a uh, DA bumper bar because I got an order for one. If you guys watched the last video where we were kind of uh, doing some stuff on the strut bar for Nick, uh, the subscriber slash customer. Um, so I have to ship that out, but I, I, I also got to make two more things. A, right now a bumper bar, and then B, what this video is going to be about, which is me uh, building this colder intake on this neat little Acura Integra that I got here. Uh, well, building it on this one to then ship out to a guy in California that has the exact same setup. So I'm not going to bore you guys with building the whole bumper bar. I've shown you guys that 20 times. I'm just going to get cracking at it so that way I can, you know, knock it out. But I do want to bring that up because I want to uh, share with you guys that I do have bumper bars available again. I was out for a couple weeks. I got material in now. If you guys don't already know, I get my mounting plates and my top plates and stuff for the uh, for the, where the bumper sits. Uh, I get all that water jet cut so that way I don't have to do it by hand. Saves time. Eh, time is money, so saves a little bit of money too, but basically this is an advertisement self-plug. If you want DA bumper bars, go get them. And I get lots of comments every time that I post up about my bumper bars of make them for this chassis, make them for that chassis. I would love to. I just, I need access to those chassis, so that's the only uh, hold up. So if you guys are local and you'd like a bumper bar at a discount, bring me your car and then I can make it on that one and then give me a day or two to make a fixture off of it and uh, I'll give you that one at a discounted rate. And then we can go from there. But in the meantime, anyways, guys, thank you for sticking around if you've made it past this part of the intro without skipping through. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna, like I said, get cracking on this bumper bar, and then I'm gonna go and we're gonna work on this Integra. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Got the bar made up. I was just giving it a good test fit. Um, just for the lulls and because I needed to make an Instagram clip. Because I still get a lot of DMs about how this thing actually mounts and its purpose and stuff. So yeah, I was doing that. But let's move on to this bad boy, shall we? So if you're asking yourself if this is a real ITR, you would be correct. This is a genuine uh, USDM Integra Type R. So obviously it has a case swap in it. So this is a JDM K24, I wanna say, yeah, K24A, I forget. It's been in here for a minute. Actually, I'm wrong. This is a K20Z3. So, uh, it does have the six speed. I know that. It's basically stock. It's got some good goodies. I think there's no internal work. Um, but this is a good buddy of mine's car. His name is Andy. He's also a viewer of the channel. And he bought this car already swapped and stuff from another local builder out here that had it for a while. Um, and it's it's got the works. It's got AC. It's got power steering. Super crispy. It's got all the JDM or not the JDM, but like the ITR goodies. It's got the five lug, it's got the ITR wheels. Obviously it's got all the decals still in championship white. It is a very, very pretty car for sure. Um, and then moving on to the interior, like these doors still open and shut so crispy. And that's what's crazy is this car only has 56,000 miles on the clock. Um, but yeah, super minty interior, as you guys can see. Genuine ITR seats and all that good jazz. The floor mats. And then, you know, the cluster, the good 10K cluster. All this stuff. So, very, very cool car. And I am uh, extremely thankful that he even let me borrow it just to make some, make this part off of it. But, yeah. What you know about that? So, pretty much what I'll be doing is really simple. I'm just going to be taking his intake off of this one. It is a hybrid racing. It's got like the whole hybrid racing catalog pretty much. Um, so I'm just going to pull this intake off here and then we're just making a cold air intake for uh, this guy in California. And we're just going to shoot it basically straight down next to the frame rail and um, that's pretty much all he wanted. Like it's, it's a pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward task. So the hardest part of it I think honestly is just going to be getting this one off because it is kind of like uh, the one that goes up in the wheel well liner and all that jazz. So I'm gonna get the front end of this thing up uh, because I do have to take that off and then yeah, pull this thing off and get started. PSA while I'm on that topic because I keep getting messages about like oh can you make a bar for this can you make a bar for that or what if I send you measurements it's like 
I really need you guys to understand that if you don't have a vehicle to just drop me off for a few days, I can't make anything you want me to. Like, it's not that simple. For you guys that are just like, oh, well, what about this? What about this? You're not fabricators. You don't know how it works. It's like, it's not that simple. I got so many guys that are like, oh, like, especially the EF guys right now. They're like, oh, would uh, the DA1 fit the EF? It's like, no. Well, what about the 88 one? It's like, you guys tell me. You guys are the ones that have four different front ends for your EFs. The only bumper bar for the EF that I know will work at this moment that I have is the 8889 hatch. I don't know if that fits any of the other EFs. I don't think it fits the RXs. I don't think it fits sedans. So for you EF guys, DC guys, EGEK, everybody else that is not a DA guy, if you don't have a vehicle to bring me, please stop messaging me asking about, can you make this? It's, believe me, it's on my list. I want to make things for everything. I just don't have access to these vehicles. So hopefully that clears this up for any of you that are watching this, because I'm just, I, I don't have time to deal with all these of 21 questions about why my bar that I have now doesn't fit. If you guys understand what I'm saying. So um, anyway, got access to the intake. I just got to grab a Phillips head really quick and then there's a small little bracket right up here that holds it in place and then I can pull this thing off. Just got a hold of uh, the guy that I'm building the intake for so he actually changed his mind a little bit. He wants it to come across, come down and then he actually wants it to come up and go behind the bumper basically right right up there so that way the filter is facing towards the front of the bumper so that won't be an issue basically I can just get away with uh, kind of copying this guy but for learning sake to help you guys kind of get an understanding of what I do uh, I'll show you so other than just doing basic trial and error, the next best way is just use something like this, which is like an angle finder or a protractor or something. And we're just going to find out basically where I need this thing to go. So uh, in this case, I kind of wanted to shoot over the hose and come straight over here towards the uh, reservoir. So we're going to kind of line that up at the center. So right now we're at about 20 degrees. And uh, as you can see, that's more or less perfect as to where we need to go. So that means I can do a few things. I, it all just depends. For me, I have to use pie cuts. I don't have curved section of tube, so we're going to pie cut our way through this. Um, 20 degrees can be turned into, say, four pieces. It can be turned into two pieces. Um, you know, you guys kind of get the idea. So if I'm doing uh, two pieces, that means I need two 10 degree pieces of pie. Um, so that's going to be five degrees on each side. So I would do five degree pie cuts, and then two pieces of pie would then straighten me out and it would look clean and simple, or I could just do a single 20 degree cut, which um, is shallow enough that I may just I probably just will do that and then so we're gonna get 20 degrees and then after that I will obviously have to account for a coupler and whatnot so whatever I'll, I'll, t I'll take that into consideration and then we'll shoot it straight across and then I'll get that measurement before I have to do a 90 down so I know for 90s I usually just do 15 degree increments which is seven and a half degrees uh, cut angle so that way each piece seven and a half seven and a half would be 15 and then with 15 degrees you do what five is six of those whatever it is for 90 15 30 45 60 75 yeah, so six of those. Uh, you get six pieces, cut them up, you got yourself a 90. Um, again, because I don't have any pre-bent, pre-mandrel bent 90s, so we would do six pieces there, and then we'll have to do another 90, and then probably kind of rotate it over. So it is going to be quite a few pieces of pie. Hopefully we have enough material, but we should. I got two uh, long sticks of it. So I will start going, and I will start cutting up. So I need at least six, 12, 14, probably around 20 pieces of pie. If you guys are regular viewers of the channel, you know this is what I use for cutting my pie cuts. There is ways around not having a uh, horizontal bandsaw, but this makes it so much easier. So obviously you just set your angle gauge to whatever angle you need. So in this case, I will set up to, I'll, I'll cut the 15 degree pieces first. So I'll set it to seven and a half. Um, and then after that, you just let the saw do the work and then you come over. I got my little belt sander here. I uh, clean off the edges and bevel them. And then I also have a uh, deburring tool. So I clean up the insides. And uh, yeah, I'll just set you guys up and we'll get to cutting. Oh, and also for reference, this is the material that we are using. This is what the owner had wanted. So we honestly, we might not have enough to do that second 90. So I will measure this up really quick, see how much we have to work with exactly. Let him know, but either way, I'll just start cutting stuff and let you guys see that. The 
We've got our pie cuts made up. Now let's go start test fitting them on the car. So this is gonna be our first piece followed by that longer straight section and then we can kind of piece together from there. I already know that I'm gonna need 90s obviously to kick it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tape those and um, just so it's easier so I don't have to try and fumble 20 pieces of pie cut out there. So what I'm doing right now is I am taping these things together um, so I can kind of know I can eyeball and place the 90 where I think I need it and then I can cut off that straight where I need the 90 to attach. So right now, just taping up the last piece of this 90. So. And there we go. Should look something like that when you're done with it and then now we can take it over to the car. So let's take this over here. Let me set you guys up and eyeball this, or at least get some measurements, better measurements. So it may be hard for you guys to kind of see, but I know that I need the piece to sit right about here. So somewhere right around there, I've got this piece already kind of taped up, but to make that just a little bit easier, I'm going to just take this, which acts as a tape measure as well. It's got measurements on here, and we are just going to measure So, about, about five and a quarter inches. I'll double check that with the tape measure, but um, yeah. Then we can kind of tape all that together. And if it goes over here where we need it to, then I tack everything together and then start building the down the downward section. So I went ahead and tacked up all three sections of pie. The other one is still on the table in the shed because it's really hot still. So I just figured I'd save myself time. I knew I needed three sections that were 90 degrees. Well, the part that sucks about making as many pies is like, that's a lot of welding because you got to think to weld one whole pie um, is basically the tube diameter, pipe diameter uh, times pie. So um, to find your circumference or whatever. So in this case, this is three and a half inch pipe. So that's ten and a half inches around one piece of like one joint. So I mean, you do the math. That's a lot of pies between the three and then the extra pieces over there. But anyway, let's get this kind of hooked up over here. So the only issue that I really have at the moment when it comes to test fitting this stuff is I don't have a coupler. So I got to basically use both hands, kind of be careful, but it's really not going to be that hard, you know? Um, obviously this coupler, the coupler that I need, oh, I got to tack this piece up too, but the coupler I need is going to be a three and a half inch because the other guy is running like a 74 or an 80 mil throttle body, something like that. Hence why he's using such big pipe. So yeah, basically all I got to do is I'm going to go tack this piece together really quick so that way I know I have that solid. And then from there, I should be able to kind of like use both hands and orientate it here in the bay as I need to and then kind of might have to get a second set of hands down there um, and then get measurements for how I need it to come down. Nothing about this is particularly hard it's just very time consuming which is also why fabrication work costs so much and if you guys are wondering how much something like this costs I gave the guy a quote between 220 and 300 plus shipping and that was before we had an official design and so because of the design he wants he's going with the longest routed one this one's gonna be the 300 and that's half my, my labor rate like I said is or like I've told people before is basically half of that of a shop because I'm not at a shop I'm still doing it out of my yard just trying to build a name for myself so you can expect somebody like me or a shop to try charge anywhere from 60 to uh, 110 120 dollars an hour for fabrication work plus material costs if you're not supplying your material um, so just to kind of give you guys an insight as to why this stuff is so expensive it's time time and skill that you're paying for not even so much material material can be pricey but it's mostly time it goes down to actually doing this section like something like this the easiest way pretty much to do it if you don't have all these different hands is obviously figure out where you're going this is still really hot so I'm gonna kind of make this quick but Assume, pretend this pipe is still here. I, I'm holding it where I want it and then I just use a Sharpie or like a, a marking pen like this. And then you just make some reference lines and that way you can go back, go to your table or whatever before you tape it up or tack it up and you can line those lines up. And uh, yeah, just works like that, pretty easy. All right, so I got this thing pretty much already done. Uh, well, tacked up, I should say. Obviously, I still got a lot, a lot of welding to do. So I already test fit, and without having the coupler, I can only get it as close as I can. But I've been test fitting it within like a half inch of this. So that way I've got a little bit of clearance on both sides of like either way he wants to be able to wiggle it. And then the filter itself, I would show you, but I need both hands to do it. 
or the end of it pops up right about here. So he should have plenty of room for like a full size uh, K&N filter. But this is definitely a hefty little intake setup here. That is some big old pipe. That is gonna be a lot of weld. So after this is all welded up, the only thing I'll have to add is the IAT little port, which is easy, just drill a hole. And then if, he, I have to text him yet, if he's recirculating his uh, crankcase, then I just gotta add a little tab for that. And then add like a pretty generic universal tab here so we can bolt it to the frame rail somewhere. And I was gonna go off of this bolt here next to the reservoir and I'll just have to leave it undrilled so that way he can drill it. Um, Cause again, without having his coupler and everything, I really don't know exactly where it's supposed to go. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go blow through all my argon. Mm -hmm. Also a good trick if you guys are ever doing stuff like this and you're having issues where the thing's pulling, lay as many tack welds as you can. So I've got three to four tack welds per piece on each side. I'm gonna go through and lay a couple more before I go through and do the final welds and all that just so I can really make sure that this thing does not pull. There's a little before and after, so or at least a side-by-side -side comparison. Obviously the only difference is, well, this is backwards too, but only difference is instead of the filter going out that way, it's gonna be coming out towards you guys. freaking goodness my allergies are absolutely destroying my face right now so uh, really quick guys I just want to show you if you guys are doing an intake on your own or you buy one and you move the IAT hole or something uh, you don't have to go to Honda to buy one you don't have to duct tape it do anything ghetto like that actually shout out to Doge for finding this but if you go to AutoZone I'm probably I'm sure O'Reilly's and you get the Dorman Universal Power Brake Check Valve Grommet Kit uh, part number 80189 it gives you this little check valve and a couple grommets and one of the grommets is the actual perfect size for an intake air temp sensor, just like that. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drill this really quick, slap this grommet in, and this intake is totally done, and I am stoked on how it looks. I'll show you guys here. So for the IAT sensor port, I'm just gonna be going right up here next to uh, the grommet here, where it was kind of like on the other one. So we're just gonna go, get our center punch, There you go. Just like that, you got your IAT bung, and uh, that's perfect. And I also went and welded on my logo. This is my very first piece with my aluminum tag, so uh, the owner of this should feel pretty darn special because you get the, the very first one. My car don't even have that. My friend's cars don't even have that. You the first. <laughs> So just to clean it up a little bit because I did kind of ding it around, I'm gonna just take some scotch Brite, some red scotch Brite. I'm gonna just try and clean this up, give it a decent raw looking finish. Um, and uh, yeah, this thing's done. Well, there we go, we got this whole piece done up. I'm gonna go just triple check that it test fits good in the car. Obviously I did it 20 times already. Uh, like I said before, I am gonna leave this hole for the guy to drill just cause I don't wanna put it say on the end here and have his coupler be, I don't know, maybe an inch longer and he has to slide it over here more. So I will just leave that simple task to him. But overall, this thing is done. Now I do wanna put it out there that yes, you guys can hit me up for custom work, but please bear in mind, it has to be something that I'm able to have access to the vehicle if I don't already own the vehicle. So DA people hit me up, I can make whatever as long as it's got K-Swap stuff. If it's B-specific stuff, it's doable, but it's gonna take me a little bit longer because then I have to borrow some friends' cars, etc., etc. But I am more than happy to make you guys stuff like this because this is awesome. I mean, for me, obviously, this is my source of income besides the little bit that I get from YouTube right now. Um, so I am more than happy to, to take out more work like this. And I mean, it's just fun. I like doing this type of stuff. Well, guys, on that note, I am gonna end this video 
video off. I'm gonna go outside in a little bit here. It's stupid hot today. And I'm gonna start uh, doing some more stuff on the DA, getting it prepped, hopefully get it finished this weekend, Lord willing. But I got a few small things that I can do, which you'll see in the next video. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video that helps boost it in the algorithm. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I, uh, I hope that you do. I hope that you hit that button. Anyways, guys, do what you love, forgive it the rest. Hit those uh, big cartel and affiliate links because that's how I make my money doing this type of stuff. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. So keep killing it. Peace out.